you ever had Giardia? Maybe your pets have had Giardia. Giardia is not fun, right? Diarrhea, sometimes vomiting. It can make your pets feel really, really sick. And today I am so excited to talk to you about a new Giardia treatment. Now, why am I using quotations. Well, stay tuned for that. You've got to listen a little bit longer or watch the replay to learn a little bit more. But here's the thing. You may come across this new treatment when you go to the vet next. And this is why it's so important that you continue to empower yourself to understand what's coming out, understand what questions to ask, to make sure that you are providing your pets the best care possible with a holistic approach. Now, here's the thing. I'm not against drugs. Conventional drugs, they are, there is a time and a place where we need them, right? So keep that in mind. I'm not against using conventional drugs when we need to, especially for quality of life, but we really need to talk about this one today because it can come with really bad side effects. So if you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor, holistic veterinarian, and founder of the Natural Pet Doctor. We're on a mission to make sure you, as the amazing pet parents, feel confident, supported, and empowered to help your pets thrive naturally for as long as possible. And today, I had to schedule this type of coffee talk. We typically do these every Friday. And I got an email the other day. And I would love for anyone here live, if you just like give me some like wave or something here where you could uh, if you ever have experienced Giardia with your pets, now this can affect dogs and cats, and it's really important we'll talk about what is Giardia, where does it come from. I see you guys. Just type in the comment if you've if you've seen this happen before, or if you know someone that's experienced Giardia, you might have experienced it yourself. This is a really, really common condition. It's a common parasitic infection that can affect especially dogs because dogs tend to be more outside where they can come into contact with this. Um, but it can also impact cats, especially if you have an indoor outdoor cat. And it's caused by an intestinal parasite, Giardia. And this can be found in feces contaminated soil, food, or water. It's actually one of the thing, nicknames for it on the human side. It's called beaver diarrhea because beavers can carry giardia. And if you drink out of the water where beavers are living, then you can unfortunately get it. Oh, Amanda, I'm so sorry. Husband had it before. I can relate. My husband's had probably every parasite on the planet um, through our entire inflammatory bowel disease journey. It's not fun. And so here's the thing. So your dogs, your cats, they can get it from ingesting the water, soil, food, other objects if something is contaminated. And there's two forms of Giardia. This is where we have the trophozoite. And this lives in the intestines of infected dogs. And then we also have cysts. So these are the trophozoites that are protected by this outer shell that gets shed in the stool. So this is the really hardy form of Giardia that survives in the environment that also can be really highly contagious to us and our other pets. So this is where we also want an environmental kind of cleanliness in order to get through Giardia too with some of the things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the new drug that was released, new in quotations, but don't worry. I'm also going to give you the natural remedies. And if you're wanting more, we're going to be releasing a blog post next week with all the remedies and the dosages for treating. Giardia and supporting gut health because that's a commonly missed issue after Giardia happens. Now, here's the problem with Giardia. When it sets up house in the intestinal tract, it's getting into those intestinal villi, little finger-like projections that are hopefully absorbing nutrients, supporting the microbiome, 
providing a protective barrier to toxins and other things passing through into the bloodstream and overstimulating the immune system. So Giardi actually takes out those microvilli and creates a lot of inflammation and damage. And that's why we see a lot of times this urgency to go out. There's watery diarrhea. You might notice mucus. Sometimes we'll even see blood because of all the inflammation that this parasite, Giardia, is creating. And that's the problem with not treating it is because we don't want to set our pets up for a problem down the road where now they have a, a chronic gut health issue and they're going to have long-term problems and things like autoimmune disease, inflammatory bowel disease, that type of thing. And don't worry, Tanya, we're going to talk about a lot of natural remedies. I do use a lot of essential oils. In this situation, I'll talk more about what I would use to keep your pets safe. So this is where, okay, how do you know your pet has Giardia? And this is where you do want to test because it's important to know, is this something where maybe they ate something and all of a sudden, you know, they're having diarrhea, but in reality, they might have this type of parasite. So the testing that your veterinarian can do is a stool test where they actually take a stool, like you can bring in a stool sample, they can collect one too rectally. And what they're doing is a lot of clinics are now using antigen testing. So it's a little snap test where we can put a little bit of stool in mixed in with the reagent and we can see if your pet comes up positive. So this is looking for essentially, has there been remnants of Giardia there? Now, a if you're seeing symptoms and your pet is testing positive, we most likely have an issue with Giardia. So this is really, really important um, you don't want to just be like, oh, I've got this and ignore it because of the damage that it can create in the gut. Now, here's the thing. We're going to talk about testing once you treat it because the problem with the antigen testing, SNAP test in the clinic, and this is why, listen up, everyone. Listen up. This is important. This is why a lot of pets end up on repeat rounds of antibiotics and drugs because the antigen test is done again. And the problem is, is that they can test positive even after the infection has been successfully treated. Did you guys hear me on that one? So what this means, oh, oh no. Can you guys see me on Instagram? Are we good? Reconnecting, reconnecting, good. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. We're going to come back out and come back in. Just a second, everyone. Technology today. Okay. All right. Perfect. Let's just stay here. Let's keep going, everyone. Okay. We are, can I repeat that? Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Stacy. We were trying to go live on Instagram and unfortunately it got disrupted. So here's the thing. One of the most, like you need to know this information when you go to your vet. This is where we have an issue with testing, where we retest. And if we only use an antigen snap test, that test can stay positive for months, even though the infection is gone because it shows the remnants of Giardia. So this is where your vet can do a stool test and look under the microscope, and we can actually look for cysts. And we can see when we retest, are the cysts still present? Really, really, really important. I have so many of my patients and clients who this is where they end up using multiple rounds of medications like antibiotics, and it creates more long-term problems down the road. So really important to make sure we are not missing that and we are doing the right testing because we don't want a false positive. And then we assume like, uh-oh, they still have it, even though the symptoms are gone. So remember, symptoms will be resolved because we cleared the infection. We still have to rebuild the gut health, though, because of the inflammation that occurs with that. So this is where typically running those fecal float tests, this is looking for the cysts. We do these three to four months after you finish treatment. This is treatment with conventional or treatment using natural remedies. So keep in mind, and this is because also too, there is a lot of resistance, which is the problem with this new medication. So because we have 90, up to 90% resistance to things like Giardia in the human realm, and the same thing is happening to our pets. So keep in mind, we want to make sure that we're following up with another 
antigen tests in three months time to make sure it's cleared, but we don't want to repeat it right away, especially if symptoms are resolved. We want to look for cysts in the stool sample. This is recorded on this, so you can rewatch this. Don't worry, you can come back to it. Now, the conventional treatment that many vets will use for Giardia is things like metronidazole or Flagyl. The problem is, as I just mentioned, is that up to 90% of metro, like the, the parasite, the Giardia parasite is actually resistant, meaning that those antibiotics do not work for your pet. So that's really, really important to know because... If we keep trying the same thing and it's not working because there's a resistance issue, you're just taking out the rest of the good bacteria in the microbiome. Now, a lot of times too, vets will pair this with a drug called uh, your, your Tylen powder. And so this is your fenbendazole, Panicure. Um, those types of drugs can also help clear. It tends to work a bit better for using a conventional treatment. And that's typically given for five days. So if you're on like weeks and weeks of treatment, it is not working and we have to reassess what's going on and what we need to do. Flagyl is the devil in conventional medicine. Don't worry, man, I got some exciting news for you. <laughs> so that's the thing, that's conventional treatment. And unfortunately, metronidazole, as Amanda so beautifully stated, uh, there is a time and a place for your metronidazole. This is not the time and place. And unfortunately, my heart broke into two when I got an email this past, actually, October 11th is when I received this email. And we have a new FDA-approved drug for treating Giardia infections. Its name is Iridia. So it's kind of beautiful, right? Iridia. So I'm going to put it in the chat box, okay? So everyone can see that. Iridia. It's a really weird, random name. And here's the thing that I want every single pet parent here to do when you go to the vet. Whenever a medication is prescribed, especially if we are seeing like the patent name, so not the actual drug name, I want you to ask, oh, that's interesting, doctor, whoever, what type of drug is that? Because with this medication, the problem that would occur for probably about 80% of the pet parent population, the 20% being probably the people here asking those questions, because you're educating yourself and you're becoming more aware of these types of things happening, is that this drug is actually metronidazole. Crazy, right? New treatment, first approved, first FDA approved animal drug for treating Giardia duodenalis infections. So why? Interesting. So I went to the research, right? And this is where this is really important. Whenever you see this, I want you to ask, huh, interesting. Why? Why now is metronidazole a medication that's been out for a very long time who has a lot of resistance to Giardia? Why all of a sudden is it being licensed and it's now safe and it works all of a sudden like magic, right? That was my first thought. I was like, huh, interesting. Someone wants to make a lot of money, right? That's usually what's behind that. So I brought up the article and I will link this to everyone here. This will be in our blog post. So make sure you get on our newsletter. I will be sending that out to our newsletter list. Go to the naturalpetdoctor.com and get on to subscribe. You can unsubscribe anytime to make sure that you get this information. This is where what's fascinating with this is that since the October 11th, going into it today, actually, on October 25th, they had to clarify that this new type of metronidazole is only approved for use in dogs. And then once again, highlighted, it's the first FDA approved animal drug for treating Giardia. So a concerning fact, and we've talked about this in our previous talk about metronidazole, is that any time a veterinarian is prescribing metronidazole, it is off-label, or it was off-label until this point. And that's because it wasn't actually proven to be safe or studied in animals for long-term side effects. So we were using it off-label. So, okay, so what do the drug companies want? Oh, we, we need to put it on label because then we can change the name of the drug and then we can say it's licensed for animal use. And now you have to use this medication for you to be within your veterinary license guidelines. That's how this works. So I'm like, okay, that's fascinating. So we have this first new drug and going through this article Okay, the sponsor conducted a laboratory study. That's fascinating. So this is where looking into the research will highlight 
a lot of deficiencies that usually occur because here's the thing, money can always be involved. I'm not saying all drugs are bad. There is a time and a place, but I want to know how was this study conducted? How many animals were involved? What were the parameters of the study? And most importantly, who funded it, right? Are there any underlying motives? So right away, okay, the sponsor who created this licensing of this drug, this formulation of metronidazole, sponsored the study right there, red flag. We are not doing third party studies where there is no financial investment or interest in that medication. Does that sound like, is this new to anyone here? Like this is really, really important. Anytime your pet goes on a medication, these are the questions we should be asking to make sure we are keeping our pets safe. You guys give me a thumbs up. I know this is a lot for a Friday morning and it's kind of intense, but it's really, really, really important that pet parents are aware of these things that are happening because it's happening in the human realm too. So as we go through, we're just on the like the update, the FDA.gov update. Okay, so it's only available. Oh, wait, let's let's go back a step. Okay, sponsor conducted a laboratory study and they did a field study too. That's great. They're trying. Um, to demonstrate the effectiveness of Iridia to treat GRD infections. In both studies, Iridia effectively reduced the post-treatment counts of the Giardia parasite in treated dogs. Okay. The most common adverse events in dogs treated with Iridia were vomiting and diarrhea, which resolved without treatment. Okay. So I'm like, we're still, we're, we're having the same, the same side effects that Giardia causes. Okay. But it resolved after treatment. I want to see the study though. But let's keep going just a little bit because this is really fascinating also. So it's only available by, by prescription from a licensed veterinarian because professional expertise is required to pop, properly diagnose Giardia and monitor the safe use of the product, including treatment of any adverse reactions. Does anyone want to guess where this is going, right? People with known sensitivity to metronidazole or other nitromidazole, which is the type of class that medication is in, should avoid contact with Iridia. Oh, good. Okay. Iridia is a skin sensitizer, which can potentially cause allergic reactions. Okay. That's good. In case of skin contact, the affected area should be washed thoroughly. People who come in contact with a treated dog saliva during the first five minutes after administration should wash their hands. Oh, okay. So, huh. So like if we were giving a pill though, we could like potentially just like put it in a pill pocket, the dog eats it. But wait, isn't the like epithelial surface of the mouth skin? So, huh, if we're going to have contact sensitivity, huh, wouldn't our dogs like have a sensitivity potentially? Wouldn't that be a, a potential issue down the road? Okay, so that's where I'm thinking. This is a problem, right? Okay. And then, oh, it's actually a, oh, it's an, a liquid. Great. So there's potential for it to just go everywhere and we shouldn't be touching it huge red flags. Does everyone agree? Like, do you agree with me? You don't have to. You could be like, Dr. Katie, you're full of it. This is crazy. However, this is coming from the FDA. So a source of authority for a lot of people. And it's saying we should not touch and come into contact with this medication. Oh, make sure your dog doesn't lick you either for at least five minutes afterwards. And make sure you keep your kids out of the food bowl if you're putting it in the food. This is super scary. So then what did I do? So there's for more information. Oh, and also too, it was sponsored by Verbac. Okay, great. There you go. Sponsored by the people who are patenting the drug. Okay, so we're not going to have my concern already is that this is not a third party study and we're going to have concerns there. So this is where we go to the freedom and information summary. I want to learn more. Let's see what's going on. Okay. How many dogs were in this study? We had, we had seven animals that went through the study. Seven, seven. Okay. That is not enough for us to be able to be happy with, okay, this truly works. Yeah. We might see a little bit of uh, you know, a positive improvement. I want to know, okay, huh, long-term, let's add in more animals. Your field study, okay, you did a field study with, uh, I think it was 120, okay. We don't know, I want to know, and it's not listed anywhere. What are these dogs eating? What other supplements are they using? Are they natural? Are there other things going on that are going to impact potentially how their gut repairs and how it naturally fights a parasite? These are things that will change the outcome of the study, if we are not consistently controlling the food, the nutrition, we've talked a lot about the, the gut health and the microbiome. 
And food is really impactful, right? It is the food for the microbes. The fiber is the food for the microbes. So I want to know, are they on a raw diet? Are they on a kibble diet? Uh, are they currently sick? Are there other comorbidities? These are things in areas where there are massive gaps with this study. Now, I wanted to go to the effectiveness because this is where the safety, there's human food safety, and this is where it's really important for all these drugs to go there. Apoquil is another one to take a look at. Um, for if you're dealing with like skin issues and side point, it can be very eye-opening and tell you about the potential long-term risks and side effects. Now, this drug metronidazole tends to be handed out like candy for pets. That's a problem. And I've seen really, really high doses. And unfortunately, with metronidazole, remember, this is metronidazole. It just has a new name to it. And it's now licensed. Well, I shouldn't do it. It is actually licensed for use in dogs. So the problem is, is I've seen high dosages used probably inadvertently, not the, not the person, the veteran, my veterinary colleague, not realizing that that dose was pretty high. And we see vestibular issues, neurological issues and seizures. So I'm like, oh, I wonder if they did safety studies on that. And typically what they should be doing with the medications is doing trials where they're increasing the dosage of the drug. So we go to, okay, well, let's see. Um, once again, avoid contact. Um, oh, this is interesting. Keep out of reach of children, not for use in humans. Um, so even though we use metronidazole in humans, fascinating, right? Keep that in mind. Metronidazole has been found to cause cancer in laboratory animals. However, there is inadequate evidence of carcinogenicity in humans. But oh, FYI, make sure you do not touch it and avoid the contact with your skin. Okay, great. So now we have potential for this is a carcinogen does not mean it causes cancer, but it can lead to cancer. Okay. I know a lot of people get really upset when you start making like the causation correlation does not equal causation, right? Well, if we see it in lab animal studies, and I would say that this is probably a reality, especially when we have a drug company stating that I'd be really concerned. So lab animals, interesting. So like, is that rats? Is that um, oh, and they're very similar. Those animals are used for studies in dogs. Dogs are also lab animals, beagles. They use them for this study. They actually used those seven animals, went through the study, and then they euthanized them, and they actually looked at their intestines to see how many cysts were left over. That's a lab animal, you know? And so this is frustrating. For one, we didn't need to do this study. We already know that there's a lot of metronidas. All these animals didn't need to be harmed with this. But two, I also want to know, did we look at the max doses and see what happens? Now, they did a tolerance. So this is what's called a tolerance study. When you actually look at these research articles, so a tolerance study is going to further evaluate the, sa the safety of an investigational formulation of metronidazole oral suspension. So they did four dogs, right? Four dogs. Uh, two dogs, approximately four months old. They gave them 500 milligrams. They give them 10, 10 times the intended daily dose for seven days and two dogs, they received a dose at five times the intended daily dose for seven days. And then what they did is they looked at, okay, the two dogs that of course received the 10X dose inhibited, exhibited severe neurological signs by day seven and eight, ataxia, lack of ocular reflexes, additional adverse signs. And one of the dogs included lateral movements of the head, eyes, recumbency, tremors, and lots and lots of drooling. Interesting. So it was having a seizure is essentially what that is stating in a uh, less scary way. So, but don't worry, it resolved with seizure medications and diuretics and taking them off the drug. Unfortunately, I was had a conversation with my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Judy Morgan, the other day, we were talking about gastroenteritis and we were talking about metronidazole. And she also has seen so many animals and even her own animals, like long time ago when she had used that medication, they had symptoms to that drug. So here's the thing. I'm stating all this and showing you this. And there's it's right there for everyone to look at when we know what to look for and what we're actually looking at. So here's what we need to do. Here is your natural, holistic, integrative approach to supporting your pets and treating Giardia. This is where there are a lot of natural treatments 
And I've actually cleared Giardia with some of my Blueprint members when they're like, hey, I don't really want to use this. We've come so far with supporting and healing the gut. If I use this drug, it's going to go backwards. And we were able to successfully resolve the cysts, get the pet back to symptom free and feeling really good without destroying the entire microbiome. This is where we can use things like garlic. Garlic is really helpful because there's studies that show it can actually release nitric oxide by the cells lining the GI tract, which actually directly kill the parasites. Garlic is not toxic to your dogs and not toxic to your cats when you use it in appropriate dosages. Okay. The study, the one study that shows that the dogs were literally like tubed with excessive gross amounts of garlic extract, highly, highly concentrated garlic. That is not what your dog is going to eat. And then we saw some potential changes in the red blood cells. And then they're like causes bleeding. That is not what happens. So keep that in mind. There are a lot of myths around a lot of like holistic remedies and natural remedies and fresh whole foods. So garlic would be one thing to start with. Okay. And I will be listing out these dosages for you in our blog post. Once again, just jump on our newsletter if you're not already on there at the naturalpetdoctor.com. Um, so that way you can get notified and emailed when we send that out. Keep in mind, Giardia is taking out the intestinal lining. So those microvilli, which are so important to the entire ecosystem, it's being taken out. So we need to support that. We need to reduce inflammation. And also to those microvilli are really important for managing histamine, histamine, mast cells. So a lot of histamine is actually produced in the gut. And if we don't have the microvilli that contain di certain enzymes, diamine oxidase enzymes, because now they're all blunt and they're, it's just gone, there's now excess histamine that then creates more inflammation and things like leaky gut that then can lead to like allergy-like symptoms and more inflammation in the body. So thinking about what supplements can we use that are going to help heal and keep those tight junctions nice and tight, naturally reduce histamine, quercetin is a great option. So this is a natural antihistamine. It's used a lot for patients that have atopic dermatitis or allergies, but it also supports and heals leaky gut while reducing histamine. So your pet's not having secondary issues. We're helping to remove the resistance so that gut can actually heal. Now, berberin is another great herb. Um, and this is where we use things like coptis a lot. Coptis, Chinese, Chinese herbal medicine, coptis is actually really rich in berberin. It is a cooling herb, but it has a lot of antibacterial, antiparasitic, anti-inflammatory properties. In Chinese medicine, it helps with what we call damp heat. This is where we see like, you know, mucousy, diarrhea. There's a lot of straining. That's inflammation. That's damp heat from a Chinese medicine perspective. This is where berberin is really helpful. Uh, we can use the human formulations if you can't find coptis, um, but thorn is a great brand that has berberin. Um, so you can use that. Once again, I will list those doses to, to help. So um, the other thing too is food therapy and food in general, fiber. Fiber is really helpful because it's going to help. It's like kind of roughage for the gut. It's also a source of food for the microbes. We have an overgrowth of bad bacteria. We have a protozoa, back, or protozoa coming in, parasite, giardia, and it's disrupting that microbiome and that ecosystem. So we want to provide a food source to help support the bacteria that's naturally in the gut so that they can then over like take over the Giardia and help outst it. Now also too, there are studies that showcase that using beneficial probiotics. So things like Saccharomyces boulardii, certain strains of lactobacillus will actually outcompete those Giardia trophozoites from binding to the intestinal lining, and then they just pass right through the gut. So this is where we want to feed the microbiome. We want to use beneficial probiotics. And if you have to, or if you've used metronidazole or your pets on a conventional antibiotic, Saccharomyces boulardii, which is a beneficial yeast, isn't killed by that. And it can help manage that ecosystem and that microbiome. So this is where using things like fermented foods too, I love the brand Green Juju, if you can access that, um, is really helpful because then we're also getting a rich source of phytonutrients that are also going to feed 
the gut. They're going to also provide nutrients and vitamins and minerals to the body to help strengthen it. We need all hands on deck for this. Giardia is nothing to joke about, and it can create a huge mess and create long-term health side effects for a lot of pets if we don't properly treat and then heal the gut. That part's always missed. That's commonly missed. We need to heal the damage from that parasite getting in there. And this is where we can use a lot of these natural remedies to treat and heal, which is great. The other, the other supplement I tend to use are things like binders. So we have a lot of inflammation. So it's kind of like the quercetin with the histamine. We have this overactive you know, immune response going on. This is where we want to use binders. So people are very familiar with things like activated charcoal. That is a very broad spectrum binder. It's going to bind to a lot of different things. Some of the ones that come in a lot of like the pet products now are becoming really popular are things like humic or fulvic acid. GI absorb from standard process is a really good one that I use a lot. It has clinoptolite, another different type of binder that's going to bind to heavy metals. It's going to support the healing of that gut lining, but most importantly, get those toxins out. Because if we're killing things like with you know, even with metronidazole, right? We should be using binders. So you think about, we have these breakdown products and also the inflammation breakdown products. We don't want that building up in your pet's gut. We need to support those detox pathways. This is why detoxification, environmental health in general is a foundational pillar I teach because it's so important and it's commonly forgotten about. We need to bind the things, get them out. So humic fulvic acid, clinoptolites, uh, activated charcoal, you don't need all of them. You just need to pick, you know, clays are also another binder that are commonly used that can be very helpful and they help resolve the diarrhea and the symptoms too. The other thing, how can we attack this like parasite? Um, oregano is one. Now oregano is super strong. This is where more is not better. So use this accordingly. And I always recommend working with an integrative veterinarian or a veterinarian who's familiar with like the holistic path and can help guide you and make sure that you're keeping your pets safe because herbs and natural remedies can also have side effects. Very, very important. Just because it's like natural doesn't mean that it can't create harm. So oregano um, is definitely one that can help. Uh, it has great parasite, anti-parasite properties, antibacterial properties. Just keep in mind it is very strong. So this is where we're not using it for a very long time, but it's going to help reduce the parasite. We need to support the ecosystem. Now, a big thing out there now, just to kind of finish up with a few things, is that you can do testing. So this is where, if you, especially if you've had a round of metronidazole, Flagyl, Aridia, <laughs> the new one, the new one, um, any type of antibiotic, this is where it's really helpful to get an idea of what actually happened to the gut. Now, you notice that I didn't lead first with the tests. I know not everyone can always do the tests. Sometimes you can't access those tests. We can follow certain principles and frameworks to make sure that we are healing the body very important. And yes, oil of oregano, I will be posting dosages and brands that I recommend in the blog that will be coming out next week. So thanks for asking, Patty. So this is where tests to see, okay, do we have leaky gut? Do we have inflammation? What happened to the microbiome? Do we still have like dysbiosis? Maybe we have lack of diversity and that's why our pets are prone to these repeat GRD infections. Ah, interesting. That'd be a root cause, wouldn't it? fascinating. So that's where tests can really help identify where those gaps and those holes are so that your treatment, you can be very intentional on the types of treatments that you're using. And this is where Innovative Pet Lab, they have amazing functional medicine stool tests that you can order from their from their, their website. We just did a talk with Dr. Betsy Redman on, I think it was Tuesday. You can go and watch that on our YouTube channel, watch that replay on the holistic approach to diarrhea. Um, highly, highly recommend that because a lot of people are missing the pieces and they're getting stuck and we haven't healed the gut health problem. Really, really important. So definitely check that out. The other test that's really popular now and helps us figure out if we do have an underlying root cause issue is the microbiome test. So animal biome, they also, you might nerd, like know of them from doggy biome, kitty biome. Those are also helpful too, to get a better idea of like, okay, what's the long-term damage? And also too, let's make sure that we are getting that microbiome, that gut health, that whole entire ecosystem back up to standard. 
because we don't want our pets to continue to have issues. I live in Colorado. My German Shepherd, Finn, we would go to the mountains. He would play in the river. He drank all sorts of water. He was a water boy. He never had Giardia. Same thing in New Zealand. We never had Giardia. Now he had this whole host of other issues, but this is something where a lot of people are like, I shouldn't take my pet outside ever again. Like, no, be aware. But if you're strengthening the gut, you're strengthening the immune system, you're strengthening emotional health and all those pillars, they're going to have less likely to be affected by parasites. They're healthier, they're stronger, their body can naturally handle it. Our immune systems and our guts are amazing at managing things when we remove the resistance to allow them to do the job. But what we've done is we put a lot of resistance on the body and then that's why we see it break. And that's why we see symptoms and recurring chronic infections. So to summarize, make sure you get on our newsletter. Love to see you guys there and share our blog that I'm going to detail all this out. So that way you can get the full protocol that I use and recommendations and supplements. But most importantly, as I mentioned at the start, we have a new drug that's come out. So that could look really exciting, especially for my conventional veterinary colleagues, if we don't end up doing the research and looking into what does that actually mean. And diving into those studies and looking at how many animals did they use, what was the length of the study, who sponsored the study, what are the side effects, has this, what is the drug? It's metronidazole. It doesn't work very well. So why are we still pushing it? And now we have another drug that's going to make this company thousands, lots, billions of dollars over the next five years it's licensed for. So stay tuned. I'm interested in five years time. So was that 2028? I want to see what happens to Iridia or if it gets pulled from the market from adverse side effects or from the harm that it can create to you. That is an adverse side effect that was listed multiple times that you should not touch it. You should not come into contact with it. What is that? That is not good. Whereas all the things I mentioned in terms of supporting, rebuilding the gut lining, reducing inflammation, using natural anti-parasite herbs, Chinese medicine, essential oils can be also used. I tend to use these because they're a little bit, they're not as concentrated. We don't need to like blast everything. Essential oils um, can complement. But why, I, you can touch these things. I'm not worried about these creating cancer down the road if you come into contact with it or creating cancer for your pet. Really, really important. There's so many great natural herbal remedies out there that you can use, test, Make sure it's working. You're going to see symptom relief. That's going to tell you a lot. If your pet is getting better, your diarrhea is resolving. They're feeling good. Their energy is returning. So that's really important is do the testing to make sure that we're not getting into this false assumption that we healed it when we actually didn't. But I hope you found that helpful today because I find a lot of pet parents are well-intentioned. They're doing the best that they can but you get stuck and it's like, you're gonna go into the vet clinic and they're going to recommend this drug because it's now licensed for use in dogs. And if you're not familiar with that drug actually means and what it stands for and the history behind it, you might fall into the camp of like, oh no, I gave that and now my pet has seizures or they have long lasting autoimmune disease or side effects that are really hard to heal and come back through. So always ask the question. My favorite question is why? Why are we using this? Why is the symptom there? Uh, you know, is there something else that also works? And also to partner with people who have been there, who have gone through the journey and might be a little bit further along than where you're currently at to make your journey faster, to help you so you don't have to get stuck and try all the different things and have things not work and then your pet gets sicker. So I hope you found that helpful. I hope uh, you feel like that was helpful enough to be able to jump on our newsletter at the naturalpetdoctor.com. I will be sharing the blog post, so stay tuned. If you found this helpful, please share it with other pet parents. The recording will be here live on YouTube and on Facebook. So YouTube's the easiest way to find all the coffee talk with the doc recordings at Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. 
I appreciate you all for taking time to learn a little bit more, hear about some of the recent changes that we've had, and being the best pet parents that you can possibly be. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. And we will be taking a little bit of a break from our coffee talks, but make sure you, you stay tuned and you subscribe so that you know when we're releasing our next YouTube videos and also to our blog posts. And I will see you guys back live in a couple weeks. Take care. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor.